Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Take 5. It is Sunday, August 14th, 2011. Really glad you're here. For those of us who have stayed with us through all of Matthew and all of Mark that we've done so far, thank you so much for being my loyal viewers. Uh, I hope it's blessed you. I know uh, it certainly blessed me. Mark 6, verse 45, immediately. We see that word a lot in Mark. This, this gospel just boom, 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 boom goes along. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all they, and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, "Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid." And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utter, utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. All right. Now, that last line is not a very nice thing to say about somebody. They didn't understand about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. It just simply means they didn't quite get it. They see a, a guy take a little boy's lunch, you know, basically make five little sardine sandwiches and feed 5,000 people or, or maybe, you know, probably a lot more. It's 5,000 men. So, probably... 10, 15,000 people, something like that, with five sardine sandwiches, and pick up 12 basketfuls left over, but they didn't get it. So he's, you know, he's dismissing the crowd, you know, some final remarks to them or something like that, sending them on home, but these guys are already in the boat. Now, he says his plan is he's just going to walk by them. He just wants to spend time with his father, so he's, he's you know, he's, he goes up on a mountainside and he prays and uh, you know, he sees they're having a little trouble. He's probably he's just going to walk by them and get to the other side and spend some more time in prayer, probably. But they see him and they they think it's a ghost. Now, I don't want to give these guys too hard a time. Even even if I had seen somebody feed five thousand people, and what an incredible miracle that is. It still might scare me if I saw somebody walking on water. People don't walk on water. So everything new that Jesus did would still be new to me. You know, I have the luxury of having read these stories before. So, you know, I look at them with uh, eyes that aren't as amazed as these guys would be. And so they were scared. They thought it was a ghost. You know, when you got all that wind and all that, you know, water spray and all that in their eyes, and and it's really late, and they've been up a long time, they, you know, uh, I don't want to give them too much trouble uh, of a hard time, but it says their hearts were hardened. So they didn't get the lesson they were supposed to get with the loaves. So I would ask you, have you gotten it? Don't let your hearts be hard. You know, it's easy for life to just kind of harden your heart about things. And you don't see the power of God. What you see is the circumstances. You see the bills. You see the disease. You see the unemployment. You see the trouble in your marriage. You see your rebellious children. You see trouble on your job if you have a job. You know, life is tough. You know, your car messes up. Your Neighbors are mean to you. There's just so many things. You see all that, but you don't see this awesome, amazing God. And your heart can get hardened by the world. And certainly your heart can get hardened by sin. Continued, repeated sin that you don't really repent of. That you don't, what we talk about, that 180, you don't turn away from. I'm not talking about sin that you commit and you confess it and you deal with it and you know you do better. That's that's repentance, okay? That's that's not what hardens your heart. But 
the continued sin, the habitual, the habits of sin can harden your heart. A continued drug habit, a continued alcohol habit, a continued uh, uh, pornography habit, a continued habit of being prideful, thinking you're better than people, or not taking correction, continued habit of deceit, that can harden your heart. These are all things can harden your heart and you won't see the amazing thing like the Son of God walking on the water or feeding 5,000. So let's learn from the disciples. Let's not let our hearts get hardened. Let's absolutely let our hearts be soft to the wonderful, amazing, awesome power of our mighty, mighty God. Come back tomorrow for the next edition of Take 5.